bentornati amiche e amici qua sul mio canale era qualche settimana che non ci sentivamo durante le vacanze sono stato malato dal giorno di natale fino al 31 quindi proprio nel piano delle feste ma insomma ora sono di nuovo qua e ripartiamo questo giovedì con la intervista a un altro content creator internazionale in questo caso Andrew Laird, Lairdigno di Sorare Data e abbiamo parlato con lui, insomma lo ascolterete, del presente e del futuro di Sorare quindi di ciò che ci può aspettare nel 2024 ma soprattutto sul lungo medio periodo io vi ricordo che se vi interessano i miei video di cliccare sulla campanella così da essere sempre aggiornati su quando verranno caricati qua sul mio canale youtube vi ricordo anche che c'è un super gruppo telegram dove ci sono un sacco di ragazzi esperti dai vari campionati di solare aggiungerò anche un topic english un topic fonse così se siete di queste due lingue madri o comunque eh, spiccate una delle due potete entrare e eh, discutere con me e con gli altri ragazzi anche nella vostra lingua madre ricordatevi anche che fino alla fine di gennaio c'è la promo sul patreon probabilmente la allungheremo perché sta andando molto bene ma insomma bando alle ciance vi lascio all'intervista all'erdigno che è in inglese e quindi cliccate ricordatevelo i sottotitoli in italiano o francese oppure ascoltatevela in lingua originale a dopo ciao ragazzi ciao a tutti e tutti eccoci qua per questo nuovo video prima parte in italiano ma poi sarà in inglese ovviamente qui con noi il grandissimo l'incredibile Andrew Laird l'erdigno from Sorare Data. So, hi, hi, Andrew. I'm very happy to have you uh, here with me again. No, thank you so much. I We were just saying it's been too long since we've spoken. So thank you for uh, having me. So first question, when did you start to play Sorare? I signed up in November of 2020. Wow. It took me two or three months to finally buy a card. I thought the game idea was crazy. I didn't think anyone would ever buy NFTs to play fantasy football. And I thought it was really, really stupid. And <laughs> I, full of, like all honesty, I, I thought the idea was dumb. And as soon as I bought my first card, I realized what, what it actually meant to buy these cards and play them in the game. And I think my problem early on was I just, I didn't get the idea of using the cards in the game and what you can get from those cards. And so there's a leap, a leap of faith when it comes to buying NFTs even. Uh, and I had no background in NFTs or crypto. And so once I got over that, i realized how great the game is. And yeah, so I bought my first card in, I think it was January 2021. <clears throat> and so I did, I benefited greatly from the Gary V boom after that and have seen the game, you know, develop over the last few years. I started working for Sora Data in October of 2021 and have been here ever since wow wow what do you think is the situation now of Sorare? it's a very Sorare has a lot of i don't want to call them problems and there it's less about Sorare itself and more about how many ways you can play Sorare and because of that the it looks like there are more problems than there are so that's a bit confusing i know but i i say a lot that there's no right way to play so rare like you can be a trader you can only focus on uh second division in germany you can only do u23s you could play just super rare and so because there are there's no right way to play i think there are wrong ways to play but because there's no right way there's just lots of people who want different things from the game and so if you have people who only play limited cards 
a lot of them don't care what happens in the super rare division. And the people who play in uniques and super rares may not care what happens in limited. And being able to please everyone is very difficult, especially when you have people who are from all over the world and come from different backgrounds when it comes to football or fantasy football. And so it's, it just seems like the the idea of let's be a global football com or now global sports company just opens up the possibility of many opinions of what <coughs> could happen and how the game should be fixed and a lot of suggestions come from people who want their problem fixed and don't appreciate that fixing their problem may create a problem for someone else and so it's it's a very difficult position that so rare are in because they have so many ways to play and therefore so many ways that people think it can be improved and so i think the we're in a position now where the the community is fairly negative and i think the the benefit or not the benefit the good thing about that is that people are passionate about the game but there's not a single goal that everyone has other than make me rich and that's not always that's not going to be the path that work like that works for everyone uh and so it's <laughs> we're in a kind of a weird period where i think it would help if everyone took a step back and said how does this game work well for me and for someone who doesn't play like me? And once we start looking at other people, I think we can start to progress in terms of improving the experience. So there's uh, we have to 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 wash the big picture and not uh, no, our particular uh, way to play in Surreal. Um, I agree with you, but how can we fight this? Uh, uh, negative sentiment that is spreading around the social media, in particular X about Sorare. It's it's really interesting how people are, and most people consider them invested in the game, whether that's monetarily or psychologically, and they want it to succeed, but they attack <coughs> it more than they try to improve it. And so... I try not to get involved in the comments that I see that are overly negative because I tend to be someone who responds back with, well, what's your solution? And most people don't have a solution that is reasonable and can be discussed. And so I usually try not to even engage in it. And so I think the... I think the the positive route is more beneficial. And so if we kind of are more public about what we do enjoy about the game still, then somebody sees that who may not be involved in the game and think, oh, that's interesting to me. Maybe I'll look into it. But instead, the, the constant negativity is is hurting all of us. And it, if if you're someone who really has had enough, and there are plenty of these people who want to sell all their cards and want nothing to do with it. It it seems detrimental to say, I want to get rid of my cards and get as much money as I can while also talking about how bad everything is. Why would your cards sell <laughs> if, every, if you're telling everyone it's bad? And so yeah. <laughs> not, not to say that you should be lying to everyone, but I think that just more of a focus on what we enjoy about the game. And and there are plenty of people who can, can admit that there are problems, but you can still enjoy what you do. And maybe we just need to focus on the positive more. Yeah. Maybe so that now it's in a, in a phase that maybe that doesn't really know what, what they want to be. Maybe this is uh, so there are people, managers that entered a long time ago that, uh, uh, wants to so something from Sorer and the new ones wanting something else. Uh, and in this moment, maybe uh, 
uh, <clears throat> Sorare is in, in, in an evolution phase. It's not uh, really maybe the, the complete game that uh, uh, everyone expects. So uh, people don't really understand what's going on. Maybe this is the problem. One of the problems. Yeah, it absolutely could be. I think one issue is older users like you and me, we've been here a long time. Yeah. We don't really know what new users think. We we want to believe we do, but we don't. And so we make these suggestions to so rare thinking they benefit new users because we need new users, but they really don't. It's really just probably a benefit to us and yeah. we think it's good for new users. And that's a difficult point for, for so rare because there's no other company like this. And it it's very difficult to run a company that has no other company to look at and say, <coughs> they did it this way and it worked. So we'll we'll do it too. Like everything they do, they're the first ones to do it. And so you can't expect them to get it right every time. And I, it does feel like they've gotten them wrong more than right lately. But I don't know if it's actually true or we just, the, the negative reaction to them makes us think that. But the game is very different today than it was two years ago, one year ago, six months ago, one yesterday. And so we're, we're all part of the evolution and how how we respond to that is going to be how everyone responds is going to be different some people will like a change some people will will not like it and how so rare comes out in the long term is what is what's most important and i think what a lot of people like to do is use a long term view when it benefits them and the short-term view when it benefits them and ignoring kind of the opposite. So you buy a card and you say, I can have this card for 10 years. And then you think of all the things you'll win over the next 10 years with that card. And the price drops in six weeks and you think the game is dead. And you forget that you have... Game over. Game yeah. over. <laughs> and you forget that you have nine years and 48 weeks left. Yeah. to possibly get some value out of it and that's obviously a, a dramatic example but i think it is if you if you bought something today for 100 euros and i told you in four years it's worth a thousand euros that's pretty good but we kind of but if it went up and down over that time you would be more you'd be more worried but if, and I'm not saying everything will be worth more in, in four years, but I think our, we're too trained to think short term in our evaluations of long term possibilities. So, do you still enjoy to play Sorare? I do. I, not the Scottish uh, Premiership. I understand. <laughs> I got myself in trouble <laughs> with a poor choice of words. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so I, I don't win as much as I used to. And there are lots of reasons for that. And so from that point of view, I, I'm not having as much fun in that respect because uh, winning is more fun than not winning. But I have found different ways to, to play so rare that allows me to, to have fun. And so I built a, a 2021 Ren collection because there are a few players that I like and I thought that would be fun. And so part of the game for me changed from uh, trying to get specific players for specific lineups and instead what 
cards do I have in my gallery that I can trade or sell to build a collection? And it's just a different way to play. I don't think it's right or wrong. Um, looking at the prices I paid, it looks wrong. I'll admit that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I think, there, like I said, there's just very different ways to play. And because, because I'm not making not that I ever made that much money from, from playing, but because it's not as easy, real, re real, really, it's not as easy to make money now. Uh, I've found different ways to, to enjoy the game. And a lot of it is, you know, scouting players or, or scouting teams or trying to find undervalued players or whatever it is. There's, there's so many ways to stay engaged in Sorer and I try not to focus so much on the money. And I think because of that, I enjoy it more than others. And that's, that's not to say that uh, people who have lost gallery values should still be happy. I, I understand why they're not. Um, but I also think that maybe they, maybe the game is harder than they thought it was going to be. And I th one of the things that we talked about a long time ago when we thought we would have a million users by now was yeah. when we had more users, the game would be harder. And, you know, the, the more people that come, the more people you have to compete against. And so the game is going to be harder. And it unfortunately feels like the game has gotten harder without <laughs> more users. <laughs> but at some point we were going to have to have a, a conversation with ourselves of can I have fun in this game without always making money? And <clears throat> unfortunately, we got to that point without making money. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think I, I really believe that if if Sorer has become a negative a negative in your life, I think it's important to stop and yeah. to step away. And I don't I mean if if financially you can do it without selling all your cards or if you need to just take a clean break i i don't think i don't think Sorare is for everyone uh, i think that there are, are parts of it that that mentally are just not positive and if that's the case then i i really think it's important to just not to not play um and and so yeah if it's if it's more negative for you, then I think it's it's important to try to find a break so that you don't have that negativity in your life. Yeah, that's true. Fully agree with you. <clears throat> Manager, now we're focused uh, on threshold. This is the core game in this moment. Do you think uh, that Sorer, uh, we are waiting for a big change? They announced it uh, in January. <clears throat> Do you think they will change something in the threshold? So I have been talking about this a little bit, that there was a time on Sorare where they would, every six months, they would talk about, they would say that the threshold was yeah. staying. Yeah. And so, I mean, this was two years ago, they would do this, or a year, or maybe 18 months. And if you step back from that, you would realize that it's been two or three years that they want to get rid of it. I don't, I don't think that they, I don't think they necessarily want to keep it. I also think that they realize how many people would be upset if they got rid of it. Wow. And so I, I, I'm confident that they know that, uh, that again, doesn't mean that they won't try to think of a way to get rid of it. And so the, they need to come up with something better and that's really hard and but it's what they have to do because if they get rid of it and i don't think that they i don't think they want to get rid of paying out that money i think they just want a different way to do it so that being good at the game is more about being better than other people as opposed to a number and I think that the way that threshold has 
evolved because so many people only play for that. And those are the people who are very publicly upset that they would get rid of it and say they would stop playing if they got rid of it. The problem is that at least when they put it in the cap modes, actually it was even before that, but you don't need good players to win it. And fundamentally, uh, sport and particularly fantasy sport is about being better than someone else. Yeah. <laughs> you have to win. And so the the threshold is is, is certainly in the current uh context of cap 240 that you don't need great players to to win. In fact, it's hard to win with great players because they yeah. take up so much of the cap. But even before cap 240, the when they was in all star the you still wanted to finish as high as possible but you could still win threshold with lower player lower yeah. level players yeah and the way that it's happened now now that it's in cap 240 the there's more value in a tier 3 or tier 4 player that can help you win 550 200 dollars then a great player who should be winning you great things and they they actually have less utility than these bad players because they they can't help you win the cash and so i i don't know what their plans are for threshold i just know that it's been years that they have not been, they've not said it's here forever it's not you know they they have made they have said things over the years about not wanting it. I mean, that's 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 not using their words, but they, yeah, they have previously had to had to announce that it was staying, which means that there was a possibility it was not staying. Uh, and so, I think, I think it's in in their perfect world, it, they would distribute cash winnings differently and so i think it's it's been a lot of talk lately um and so i think people need to think about what happens if it leaves and whether they <clears throat> want to play a game that doesn't have that but i also think that they they aren't going to just take that money that they usually pay out and keep it i think they still need to distribute it yeah to as many people as possible or else yeah, lots of people will leave. Maybe they will. Uh, <clears throat> um, they will um, make something similar to Premier League uh, with uh, I don't know. You have to buy one uh, player of the the actual season to play yeah. cap to forty or something like that. They could. They could. Um, I think the. I think what they want to avoid is someone buying. $300 worth of rare cards and winning $50 every every game week or you know every weekend or every couple weekends it shouldn't be easy to spend $300 and make $600 in 6 months and so i don't really like the idea of making the threshold harder because it doesn't really solve the problem it just yeah pushes the problem. Um, but, but I understand why so many people play and because it's easy. I mean, it's, it's the easiest way to make money on so rare. And I don't think so rare want to be a game where it's easy to make money like that because they, <laughs> then they don't make money. Um, and so I think if they, if they made cash rewards, more of more winnable in other competitions people would be more willing to enter more competitions and so maybe in rare you don't win fifty dollars just from cap 240 but maybe you win ten dollars in champion europe twelve dollars in challenger yeah. Yeah, eight yeah. and and the idea is that you're 
you're competing in more places um, to win the money. But I think it's, I think they have to make it reasonable. You can't just pay the top 10 or the top 30 because we all know the names that will win all the money. And, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, and so they need that. That's what I have said about the threshold is that the benefit is it, it means more people have won. And it's very difficult for me to see them get rid of the threshold and have it be a positive that you go from this many people winning to this many people winning. And so whatever they come up with needs to be good. <laughs> wow. Last question for you, Andrew. How we can onboard uh, this one million people on Sorare? How we can do it? Because this is, I, I, I will say it, this is a, a, a very big issue for, for the platform in this moment. So I think they, I think we, we think of a million users and we think of a million people buying cards, limited cards and, and buying lots of them. Um, and I don't think that is realistic. Um, so it, it causes a bit of a, of a, that's the word I'm looking for. We have a problem. What I said before that there are many ways to play so rare. And so if you only want to play Syria, you can do that. And so, you know, you buy your Milan cards and you buy some Napoli cards and you compete in the Syria competition and that's what you want to do. And all of us are looking at that that player and saying buy Ajax cards, buy uh New York City FC cards and play more and they they don't want to. They like Syria, they want to play and it's okay that's okay. And so if we have a million users, it's possible that lots of them only play the amateurs and lots of them only play La Liga. And because you don't have to play everything, we may not think that enough people are playing. And so Sorare has built themselves as, as a global sports company. And... Because of that, there are people who are going to be very focused on maybe one thing and other people will be focused on something else. And we could have a million users and not necessarily see more people playing Challenger Super Rare because they just don't have enough people who want to do that. And Super Rare is not easy. It takes... No. A lot of time and sometimes it takes lots of money and it's a not that many people love fantasy football and so i don't think i don't think getting a million users is reasonable in the short term and even if they get to that point it's not going to be a million users wanting to buy rares or super rares And so I think Rivals will bring more people in. I think it's a fun game. Yeah, And yes, it is. It is. It's, it's easy to understand. Mm. And if you fall in love with Rivals, then at some point you'll buy pro cards and then you can buy, then you go join the, the, the pro competitions. And I think... We need to remember that not everyone who plays Rivals will want to play the the regular game, and that's okay. But if we can turn a, a, some of them into real play, you know, regular players, then that's great. I so I think Rivals is is a, a way to get people interested in the idea of fantasy football when maybe they just didn't know what it even was. So to answer your question, I have no idea. <laughs> you get a million users. And so this is the perfect conclusion of this interview. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Andrew, to 
be here with us, with the, the Italian community. No, thank you so much for, for having me on. Bye bye. Eccoci, spero che l'intervista vi sia piaciuta, con Andrew abbiamo parlato, avete visto, di un sacco di cose, siamo andati anche molto in profondità su ciò che può succedere all'interno di Sorare, eh, io vi ricordo, se vi è piaciuto il video, di lasciare un mi piace, cliccare la campanella per essere aggiornati su tutti i prossimi video che usciranno qui sul canale e ovviamente, soprattutto direi, se avete questioni da sottopormi o che io posso sottoporre ad Andrew, scrivetelo nei commenti in maniera tale che così... È interessante anche naturalmente capire la vostra opinione su quello che può essere il futuro di Sorare. Eh, vi ricordo appunto anche del gruppo Telang, vi ricordo del Patreon, vi dico anche in anticipo che nelle prossime settimane comincerò a creare dei contenuti più specifici sulla storia del calcio, una cosa che voglio fare da tempo e che ancora non avevo trovato insomma, l'occasione per farla, ma comincerò a farla, quindi troverete anche questi contenuti qui sopra perché insomma è importante anche per me, insomma, non dimenticare questa parte da narratore. Per il resto, che dire, buon sorare a tutte e tutti.